Welcome to our lecture online and here's our second example how we find the magnetic field caused by a moving charge. Again, just like in the first example, we have an alpha particle that's moving to the right at 5,000 meters per second and we're supposed to find the magnetic field located 10 centimeters away, but this time it's at an angle directed 45 degrees above the positive x-axis. So let's make a drawing of that and see what it looks like. So first of all, an alpha particle is something that has two protons and two neutrons. It's essentially the nucleus of a helium atom. It's moving to the right at a velocity of v equal to 5,000 meters per second. And that's in the x direction because that's a vector quantity. And let's see now, we're supposed to find a magnetic field 10 centimeters away. So let's draw a little circle around the moving particle with a radius of 10 centimeters. And we're supposed to find the magnetic field at a position on that circle at an angle of 45 degrees above the horizontal. So if this is the uh, position vector r, then this here is theta equal to 45 degrees, and we're supposed to find the magnetic field right at that spot. Well, first of all, to find the direction of the magnetic field is fairly straightforward. We use our right-hand rule because it's a positive charge that's moving. We point our thumb in the direction of the moving charge, and then our fingers curl in the direction of the B field, the magnetic field. You can see the magnetic field loops around the moving charge as it's moving in this direction. And so at the very above the, the moving charge, the B field is in this direction, so it would be coming out of the board. Here it's down, here it's into the board, and on the back side of the, of the moving charge, it's upward. So, assuming that's directly above the uh, moving charge at an angle of 45 degrees above the horizontal axis, we can say that the B field is out of the board. So we draw a little dot with a little circle around it, indicating that's the tip of the arrow of the magnetic field coming out of the board. All right, now for the magnitude. We need the equation that the B field is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times the size of the charge times the vector product of the velocity and the unit directional vector of the, of the pointing vector or the position vector. And we divide that by, let's see here, the length or the magnitude of the position vector squared. Okay, that's the equation. Now, since we already know the direction of the magnetic field, we can simply then go look for the magnitude of this field, which is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times the size of the charge, and v cross r is the same as v times r times the sine of the angle between them. Now, this is the unit vector, so let me just put in a 1, because the length of the unit vector is simply 1 times the sine of 45 degrees, and divide that by the length of the position vector squared. Okay, now we can go ahead and plug in the values. So this is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. That's Tesla's meters per amps. We multiply that times the velocity. So we have, um, oh, I forgot the charge. No, we need to put in the charge. And there's two positive charges. That's two times the size of one charge, 1 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Can't forget the charge. Times the velocity, which is 5,000 meters per second times 1 and times the sine of 45 degrees which is about 0.707 and take the whole thing and divide it by the length of the position vector squared. The length is 10 centimeters and so that would be 0.1 meters squared. All right, now let's find the value of that. Let's grab our calculator here. I think I'm still missing a 4 pi here, so I better put that in there. There's the 4 pi, can't forget about that. And now when we simplify things, this 4 pi cancels out that 4 pi. And let's work out the rest. 1 e to the 7 minus times 2 times 1.6 e to the 19 minus times 5,000 equals and divide that by 0.1 squared equals and, oh, don't forget this 0 0.707, so times uh, 45 degrees, the sine of that equals, and we get 1.13 times 10 to the minus 20 teslas. So how do I know that's teslas? Well, let's work out the units. If we grab all the units out here, we have teslas times meter per amp. We have a coulomb here. We have a meters per second. And then in the denominator, we have meters squared. 
All right, so unit-wise, these two meters cancel out those two meters. Now an amp, that's a coulomb per second. So we can replace this by a coulomb per second. And then you can see that this coulomb cancels out this coulomb, and the one over second cancels out this second right here. And we do indeed end up with teslas, which is the unit for magnetic fields. So that works out. I'll leave that down here for a moment so you can take a look at it. But anyway, in um, uh, summarizing what we just did, we had a moving particle. The particle has two positive charges, so the charge on that particle is two times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. It is moving to the right at 5,000 meters per second. We're interested in finding a magnetic field over here at a distance uh, 10 centimeters away. So this distance here is 10 centimeters. The position from there to there is denoted by what we call the position vector r. To find the direction of the field, we point our thumb in the direction of the motion of the charged particle. The fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field, which means at that location it's curling out of the board, so it's directed outward this way. The magnitude of B field can be defined by this equation. We know the angle here is 45 degrees. We know that the velocity is 5,000 meters per second. We know that the distance is 0.1 meters, and then Q is twice the charge of a single charge. And there's the answer. All right. Our next example is going to add something to this problem so you can see how you can then do multiple particles and how that affects the magnetic field. So stay tuned for that one.